96. What is the molar solubility of TLOH3 in a 0.10 molar solution of NH3? Okay, so in order to do this problem, I did need to go into the back of the textbook to find out a couple of constants. Specifically, we're asking for molar solubility. So anytime that they're asking for a molar solubility, that has to do with saturated solutions, solubilities. So I had to find the KSP for TLOH3. But what is a KSP without its balanced equation? So I'm just going to write the balanced equation out for TLOH3. Keep in mind that with KSPs, you're always starting with your compound, and that is the solid, because this is going to dissociate or break down into its two ions. And hydroxide OH is always going to stay by itself. So the two ions are TL and then plus the OH. There's a couple of ways to find the charges, but just use your subscripts. You had one TL and three OHs. Crisscross those up to get the charges. This three crisscrosses up, telling me that the TL was a plus three, and then hydroxide is always a minus one. They are both charged, so that means that it's aqueous. And I do see that I have to balance this by saying that there's three hydroxides, so I just have to quickly put a three in front of the OH minus. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag down that KSP value, get rid of this, and we know that the KSP expression's gonna come, so let's just write it out now. Remember, this KSP value, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 46 equals the concentration of the products, no reactants because no solids are allowed in any K expression. So this would be just equal to TL plus three times the concentration of OH minus, and that is raised to the third because there are three OHs. So I'll put that in yellow. Okay, so that's cool. So let's just bring that up here. Now, Let's see what's going on with the other formula. We are starting with NH3. So I did go in the back of the book to find out what K expression goes with NH3. And it turns out that NH3 is ammonia, right? It's a base. So there was a KB related to it. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So with that information, I'm gonna write the KB expression for NH3. So remember, if you're starting off with the base, which is aqueous, right? All your weak acids and weak bases are aqueous. You always have to add it in water just to get that balanced equation. And water is a liquid. This goes back and forth between, remember, the base is gonna turn into the conjugate acid. It's gonna gain one hydrogen. So this would be NH4 plus. And then H2O loses a hydrogen, so it becomes OH minus. We got charges on this side, so that means that's aqueous, that's aqueous, and we're all good here. Everything is balanced. So I'm just gonna bring the KB expression over here, erase that, and just quickly write the KB expression, right? The 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth will equal something divided by something. It's the two aqueous products divided by reactants, right? So it's gonna be the NH4 plus, times the OH minus divided by the NH3. Okay. Now, when we read this over, we want to solve for the molar solubility of TLOH3, but they give me information about the NH3 one. Since I have more information about NH3, I'm just going to use this equation first, and I'm going to bring this solubility one down to the bottom. Okay. So now, let's see. Well, they're telling us that we're starting off with 0.1 molar of NH3, right? So generally speaking, if they do tell you you're in some type of solution, this is a initial concentration. So if you want, we could just quickly do the ice table. So let's break it down. Eee, okay, cool. And we got ICE. 
Remember, since water is a liquid, it does not matter for your ice table, so just get rid of that. They do tell you that you started off with 0 0.10 molarity of NH3, nothing for NH4 or OH minus, so that's zero and zero. C stands for change. Remember, you could only go up from nothing. So on the product side, this would have to be plus and you would have to subtract on the other side. We do not know how much, so I'll just label it as X. Minus X, plus X, and plus X. And then equilibrium is just I and C pulled together. So for NH3, it would be 0 0.10 minus X. 0 plus X is X, 0 plus X is X. And these three pieces of information are going into your KB expression. So maybe I will bring this over here. NH4 is X and OH minus is X, right? And NH3 is 0 0.10 minus X. But remember, always try to assume first. Let's assume that since this K value is really small, that if you started with all reactants, you're probably going to end with all reactants and that change isn't going to, you know, mess the number up. So we can assume that the equilibrium is going to be super, super close to 0 0.1. Now, let's see. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x times x divided by some number, right? This is x times x divided by 0 0.10. We cross multiply first. That seems pretty easy to do. So then you got 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth equals x times x is x squared. This one's pretty easy. Just take the square root, solve for x. Okay, x equals, let's see, square root 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth. I get a really long decimal, so let's just say 1.3416. That's good enough. Times 10 to the negative 3. Now, does this pass the 5% rule? Right? The 5% rule is the rule in which we could get rid of that minus x. So I'm just going to take this number. And you always divide it by your initial, which was 0 0.10, and times by 100. If you get 5 or less, you're good. But if we get over 5, that means we have to go back and keep that negative x in there. But if when I do my math, I get, oh yeah, I get 1.3%. So we pass the 5% rule. So now I can just say that this is molarity. Now, keep in mind that remember, what is the similarities between these two, right? How am I going to transfer over from this information to this equation? There has to be some, you know, substance that is the same. And the substance that is the same is the OH. There's OH minus and OH minus in both of them. So what I'm really, you know, what I really cared about here was the OH minus concentration. And the OH minus was equal to the 1.3416 times 10 to the negative third. Now I'm going to use that piece of information to plug in into the other equation. So now I'm finally going to bring this up and I'm going to say, and maybe I'll do like a, let's see, that's pretty good. Let me just maybe bring this a little down. Okay, there we go. Okay. So, now we know that we're starting with 1.3416 times 10 to the third OH. But don't get tempted to times it by three. It doesn't matter what the coefficient is. This is the total hydroxide concentration. So that has to transfer over here, 1.3416 times 10 to the negative third. But we don't know what the TL concentration is, so we just label it as X. There was only one TL, so that's why it's just one X. Okay, remember, no solids in the KSP equation, so we don't care about that. So let's see, TL is X, 
And this is 1.3416 times 10 to the negative third. For all of you who are asking why we didn't do a nice table for this, it's because this KSP is so small. There is no way that we have to do the quadratic year. So I'm just going to bypass it. So 6.3 times 10 to the negative 46th equals, we have x times 1.3416 times 10 to the negative third, and that's cubed. So if I just quickly do that, 1.3416 times 10 to the negative third cubed. Um, okay, I'm just gonna erase this because I'm just simplifying. And it seems like I get 2.4147 times 10 to the negative ninth times 10 to the negative ninth. Solve for x. All we have to do is just divide on both sides by that number, right? 2.4147 times 10 to the negative ninth, 2.4147 times 10 to the negative ninth. This cancels out. And now we're left with x. So 6.3 times 10 to the negative 46 divided by 2.4147 times 10 to the negative ninth. I get a really, really small number. And two sig figs, so 2.6. 2.6 2 times 10 to the negative 37th. And that's a molarity. Okay, well, going back to what they wanted, we wanted the molar solubility of TLOH3. Now, even though this is not part of the equilibrium expression, remember, there's still molarity for the solid. And just use your ratio. There was one TLOH3, and we solved for one X. So it's the same number. Molar solubility is always going to be X when you solve this way. So I have 2.6 times 10 to the negative 37th molarity for TLOH3. And that's your molar solubility for the compound. There you go. Okay. Okay. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope to be talking to you in, in future lessons. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.